Cotton is seen at a thrift shop. She then notices a strange object. The shopkeeper tells her that it's a game to be played with true friends. To test how long someone's friendship can last, you must be honest about your deepest desires. Meanwhile, a teenager named Kyle is seen hacking into webcams in various houses, allowing him to see what people are doing. Following the instructions from the shopkeeper, they are required to touch the game device and reveal their deepest desires. Cotton says, we will win if we stay friends. Zuza seems hesitant, but she is the first to put her hand on the device. Cotton, Robbie, and Courtney then follow suit. Unbeknownst to them, Kyle has hacked the webcam in the room and is watching them from his computer. We'll focus on Cotton's story first. Cotton starts by admitting that she feels trapped in her daily routine and wishes she could escape this reality. The atmosphere becomes tense. Cotton suddenly finds herself in a nightclub. She searches for her three friends and only finds Courtney outside. Cotton panics, looking for Robbie and Zuza because she doesn't want anything bad to happen while they are playing. It's crucial for the game's continuation. But Courtney ignores her and instead hands her a pill that Cotton has long desired. Cotton gets angry and throws it away. She says, I thought you were my friend. Cotton storms off to continue searching for Robbie and Zuza. Not long after, she sees them in an intimate moment. Cotton immediately storms out. In the car, she looks very upset. Then she hears a whisper. Suddenly, a duplicate of herself appears and strangles her from behind until she dies. Kyle is seen staring blankly at a missing poster of Cotton. Back at his house, he opens the webcam recordings on his computer. It turns out he has been monitoring and saving recordings of what happened during Cotton's and the other's game. With Cotton gone, Zuza takes her turn to reveal her desire. It's not yet clear what she wants, but the story shifts back to the nightclub, where Zuza and Robbie are being affectionate and leaving Courtney alone. They go to the rooftop of the club, where Robbie seduces her, and because they are drunk, they kiss. But shortly after, Zuza pulls away. Unknown to Courtney before, Zuza has decided not to continue her actions with Robbie. She leaves Robbie and goes to the bathroom. Strangely, Zuza suddenly finds herself in Cotton's room, with the friendship game orb floating in front of her. Suddenly, the orb seems to hit her in the stomach, causing her to lose consciousness. Scene change. She then finds herself in her room, looking at a picture of the four of them, and hears a voice asking, Will your friendship survive? Suddenly, Zuza's mother calls her. Detective Modari, who has been handling the case of Cotton's disappearance for the past few days, arrives. Zuza admits she didn't see Cotton at the nightclub. Detective Modari then asks, Was there something that caused you all to fall out? Zuza remains silent. Everything still seems confusing. Zuza and Courtney put up missing person posters for Cotton around their neighborhood. Unlike Courtney, who is worried about Cotton's safety, Zuza is convinced that Cotton disappeared on her own, not because something happened to her. However, Zuza apologizes for her earlier words. She just can't believe Cotton would leave her behind. Then Courtney wants to say something, but the scene shifts. While Zuza is working part-time at the amusement park, she spots a mysterious figure sneaking behind one of the rides. Curious, she follows. When Zuza looks into a mirror, she suddenly finds herself back in a room, just like what happened at the nightclub before. She sees Cotton asking, Will your friendship survive? Zuza sees her stomach bleeding, but after realizing it's just a hallucination, she rushes out of the place. Outside, Robbie appears and invites Zuza to search for Cotton and fix their friendship, but Zuza declines and walks away. Without the others knowing, Zuza repeatedly tries to contact Cotton, but there's no response. She becomes more convinced that Cotton left town without telling them, which angers her because it reminds her of her father, who also left their family long ago. They argue. Her mother keeps reassuring Zuza that Cotton's disappearance isn't her fault, just like her father's departure wasn't. But Zuza snaps back, saying, Dad left because of someone, maybe because of me, or maybe because of you. Her mother goes silent and leaves Zuza. Zuza then receives a message from Kyle's mother, Donna, asking her to keep Kyle company at home because she has a date. Zuza refuses, saying she's busy. But Donna insists, reassuring her that Kyle won't be difficult. He's just obsessed with his computer. Now it's Courtney's turn. 
Courtney reveals her deepest desire. She wants to be accepted into a prestigious university, Oregon University. The scene shifts back to the nightclub. They are eager to enjoy the party with some weed, and Courtney heads out to find some. Shortly after, she runs into Cotton. This turns out to be the beginning of the same events shown at the start of the film, where Courtney offers Cotton a pill, but she refuses and leaves her behind. At home, Courtney sees a missing poster of Cotton printing out on its own, but the image is blurry. Suddenly, she receives a letter, and it's from Oregon University. When she opens it, Courtney discovers that she has indeed been accepted into the university. Back on the street, what Courtney wanted to share earlier was the content of that letter. No one believed Courtney could get accepted there because her grades had always been so low, but that was Courtney's deepest desire she expressed during the game. She believes that her acceptance into the university is somehow connected to the game. However, Zuza denies it. She even says, We were just influenced by Cotton's nonsense at that time. Disappointed, Courtney asks, Are you sure about your desire back then? Zuza firmly answers that she is sure in every word. Courtney then leaves and throws away the remaining missing posters of Cotton. Suddenly, it seems like someone throws the same pill bottle from the nightclub earlier. Courtney panics even recording the scene for safety. But upon checking, no one is there. She feels relieved, but then she hears a voice calling her again, seemingly coming from her phone. Suddenly, she sees Cotton appearing behind her and stabbing her with a knife. It turns out to be just a hallucination. She's startled again, but it turns out it was only a message from Robbie, asking her to meet to discuss Cotton. Finally, it's Robbie's turn. His desire is not yet clear, and the scene shifts back to the nightclub where he had been intimate with Zuza. After Zuza left him, Robbie returned to the club's rooftop and thought he saw someone passing by. Soon, he saw Cotton from afar. Suddenly, they found themselves in a room. Cotton said that they had all failed. Robbie wakes up from his hallucination and immediately goes to Cotton's room to retrieve the friendship game ball. Kyle is seen watching through the webcam, recording everything. Shockingly, Cotton suddenly appears and walks towards the camera. She then asks Kyle if he wants to play with her. Moments later, Cotton seems to pull Kyle into another dimension. Cotton is seen torturing Kyle for having seen things he wasn't supposed to see, namely through all the webcams he had hacked. The scene shifts to Zuza, who finally agrees to go to Donna's house to babysit Kyle while Donna goes on a date. After some time, Robbie and Courtney arrive with Cotton's friendship game ball. Robbie suggests that they play the game once more. Though hesitant at first, Robbie explains that all the desires they expressed truly came to fruition. They finally agree to play again, but this time they share the same desire, to find out what happened to Cotton. However, nothing happens at first. Then the ball suddenly vibrates and slightly injures Zuza's finger. Her blood drips onto the table, and she wipes it off. Seeing this, Courtney considers giving up, but Robbie says, if your friendship doesn't survive the game, then neither will you. That's what Cotton said before. Suddenly, Kyle sends them a video recording from Cotton's room to all their phones, showing them the moment they first played the friendship game. Here it is revealed that Robbie's deepest desire was to have great sexual skills. Meanwhile, Zuza's deepest desire was to be able to not care when her three friends left her, as their departure had deeply broken her heart. Zuza then realizes that the person who sent the video was Donna's child, Kyle. They make a plan for Zuza to go up to Kyle's room and distract him, while Robbie sneaks in to check Kyle's computer. Zuza goes up to Kyle's room. At first, Kyle ignores her and continues working on his computer until Zuza invites him to watch a horror movie. Kyle finally agrees. They start watching the movie together with Zuza and Courtney, but Courtney gets uncomfortable and decides to leave. Meanwhile, Robbie sneaks into Kyle's room and checks his computer. To his shock, Robbie finds many recorded files from Cotton's room neatly stored. He then sees a video of Cotton having an intimate encounter with a man. Suddenly, Kyle appears next to him, and the man Cotton was with turns out to be Robbie. Robbie is confused because he feels like he never did that. But Kyle suddenly disappears. It turns out that Robbie was just hallucinating, while Kyle was actually sitting next to Zuza watching the movie. Robbie then approaches Zuza and tells her that Cotton left because of what happened between them at the nightclub. Meanwhile, in the bathroom, Courtney is getting dressed up. 
Shortly after, she finds herself in Cotton's room, where she sees the ball floating and it suddenly stabs her in the stomach. Robbie and Zuza rush to her aid after hearing Courtney's scream. When they are all in the bathroom, they start confiding in each other. To everyone's surprise, Courtney admits that she had also slept with Robbie, after Robbie had been with Zuza. At this point, everything starts to become clear. Each of their desires ultimately led to Cotton's death, because in the beginning, Cotton's desire was to escape the burden of life. First, Robbie sees Kyle in the yard, and as he approaches, he discovers Cotton's blood-soaked body in the garden pool. Robbie hurriedly returns to the house to tell Zuza and Courtney. However, since the door is locked, he enters through Kyle's bedroom window. There, he notices Kyle's computer screen flickering. Upon closer inspection, he finds a video of Cotton's murder. As the video plays, the person who murdered Cotton is revealed to be Robbie himself. Then there's Zuza, who had fainted at the nightclub. But she finally woke up and actually met with Cotton. Cotton told her that she was going to leave town. She also confessed that she never considered Zuza a friend. She said this after seeing Zuza with Robbie. Cotton even blamed Zuza for everything that happened. In anger, Zuza hit Cotton, causing her head to slam into the car, and Cotton died. Finally, there's Courtney. After leaving the bathroom, Courtney suddenly receives a video call from Cotton, who had just overdosed on drugs to commit suicide. The drugs Cotton took were the same pills that Courtney had given her at the nightclub, where Cotton confessed that she couldn't take it anymore. She then died by consuming all the pills from Courtney. Suddenly, Courtney sees Robbie, covered in blood, knocking the door. When Courtney opens it, Robbie immediately stabs her to death. Zuza witnesses the scene and even sees Robbie tearing apart Courtney's abdomen. Robbie then chases Zuza, intending to kill her and end the game. Just as Robbie is about to kill Zuza, she reminds him that they are friends. Robbie is momentarily shocked, and Cotton suddenly appears behind him, seemingly in another dimension. Zuza admits that everything that happened was her fault and apologizes to Cotton because her desire to stop caring about her friends when they left is what caused the rupture in their friendship. Zuza's act of acknowledging her mistakes and apologizing is what ultimately helps them win the friendship game. The scene then shifts back to the thrift shop and everything resets to the beginning. But this time, they decide not to buy the game ball. The four of them return to being true friends. The film closes by showing the shopkeeper offering the friendship game to two new women who are friends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video. Two.